everybody loves a good challenge. A finished challenge is like a feat of strength. It gives us a sense of accomplishment and it wakes up the perfect combination of our competitive and our playful side that is very useful when it comes to building new habits. In fact, that's the best part of challenges is that they can help us build new habits. And while they can also help us to get out of our comfort zone and try new things and push our boundaries, this video is about habits and challenges. And in the last video, I talked about setting goals. Everybody has goals and things that they want to achieve and especially long-term goals are very important to us. But long-term goals are far off in the future and we really can't get the pleasure of completing them now. For example, if we go to the gym a couple of times, we're not gonna feel stronger instantly. We're not gonna lose that weight instantly. Or if we meditate for a week, maybe we won't feel any different, but in the long term, we will. The problem is that our society and just today, there are so many things that can give us instant gratification that it can feel like these things that can, our long-term goals are just not good enough in the moment. And we need to counteract this. I think the challenges are the perfect remedy for counteracting this instant gratification society thing. So I have a few challenge ideas for you for the new year or for any year that you're watching this in. I have 20 challenge ideas for you that are going to motivate you and help you reach some really interesting goals. Number one, you could try a whole food plant-based diet for a month. And this can have many benefits, not only to you, but also to the planet and to the animals. Many studies show that a plant-based diet is related to better heart health and against autoimmune disease, diabetes, and all kinds of sicknesses. Plus there is all kinds of new things that you're gonna try if you're going to cook plant-based. So that might be a great thing to try out. Number two, you can try intermittent fasting. And we evolved as a species that did not really eat all the time. So we are not cut out to be digesting constantly. It can actually make us feel tired, not to mention the extra calories that we're eating if we're eating all the time. So intermittent fasting is a way in which you, it's kind of a diet in which you only eat through a certain amount of time for the day. For example, 16 hours you don't eat and then eight hours you eat. This doesn't involve any calorie restrictions. You can drink water all the time and reap benefits such as energy, weight loss, and just generally feeling better. The third challenge is walking 10,000 steps per day, which is especially good if you're not doing any exercise at all. It's gonna burn some calories, it's gonna get you out of the house, it's gonna motivate you to start moving, and then maybe get you into other exercise. And if nothing else, it's just a great way to clear your mind and to see something new and maybe feel motivated. Fourth, a yoga or flexibility challenge. So the benefits of doing yoga and becoming more flexible are many. First of all, yoga is a type of exercise, so you are going to burn calories and you are going to get more toned and in shape. And especially if you're somebody who works in an office, your back can start hurting or your joints can start hurting and it's a great way to move and you're instantly going to feel a lot better. Five, you could try a fitness challenge. A lot of people have a goal of losing a certain amount of weight and it can be really hard to get into a workout routine. So a perfect start for that might be a fitness challenge. And this could be anything from doing one squat per day and maybe doing two squats the next day and doing three squats the next day to swimming every other day or trying a new class. Six, a cycling or walking everywhere challenge. So as you know, there is a lot of air pollution going on, especially due to transport. And it's great if we can get to more places by cycling or walking. If you don't usually do that, maybe trying this out as a challenge can get you to find out that you actually like it more. Number seven, cooking a new meal to yourself and making it healthy. A lot of people can't cook. I personally am not the best chef. So trying to get yourself out of the comfort zone of always making the same kind of macaroni or 
or student meal can be a great way for you to become more healthier. So you could say for this month, I'm only going to try new healthy recipes and actually go out there and put yourself to it and get this knowledge, a hobby challenge. So I'm sure you have a hobby which you don't have a lot of time for. Maybe you're working, maybe you're studying, maybe you're doing a bunch of different things, but you love to write or you love to play the guitar so you, or you love to paint. So you need to spend more time doing that. I think if you come up with a challenge kind of centered around your hobby, this will be a great way to fall in love with it all over again and get a bunch of training in and just feel just get better at it and feel good about it. A learning challenge. So something that is not a hobby yet, something that you were yet to learn and to understand. For example, you're a programmer and you want to learn a new language or you've never painted before and you want to learn how to do that is something that you could really benefit from. Having a new skill is always great. Could be good for work, could be just good for something to entertain yourself. So you can go on Skillshare or you can go on Udemy and you can hear a class every day for a month. And by the end of this month, you will have learned so many new things. Next is a no sugar or no salt challenge. And I'm sure many of you know the downsides of sugar and salt. And while we do need a small amount of salt and we do need fruit sugar, there is so much added um, sugar and salt to processed foods that is absolutely not natural to our bodies and especially when we think about instant gratification the amount of sugar and salt in processed foods is something much much larger than it is in natural foods. Up next a productivity challenge. There are a lot of videos on YouTube about productivity and people love to try productivity hacks. There are just so many of them out there that if we don't specifically focus on them as a challenge, we just watch the video, we forget about it, we never do it. So if you say specifically for this month, I'm going to try the productivity challenge of doing a tomato timer, 25 minutes of work, five minutes of break, all the time while I'm working, you're actually gonna try it and know if you like it versus if you just see it and you're like, yeah, I'll try it once and then you don't do it because of course it's a hard thing to do even if it's a tool for you to do something else easier. Up next is a mindfulness challenge. So in today's world, we are often not really in the present. There are so many things that we can use to escape the present. We can be on our phone, we can just stare out of the car window, we can put on some music and just not be in a place where, where we are. And maybe that's sometimes a good thing, maybe it rescues us from feeling bad in the moment, but in general it is good to be mindful. For example, to be mindful of what you're eating so you don't overeat, to be mindful of your loved ones so that you appreciate them and you don't hurt them or use them, to be mindful of your life so that you end up doing what you want to do. So you could try a mindfulness challenge. You could try to just be more grateful for 30 days, like write down what you're grateful for, or you can try meditating for 30 days and see if that gets you to be in the moment more often. Anything you can come up with related to just actively thinking about the things you're doing. Next up is reading. And reading is great for so many things. It can help you feel better on a hard day. It can help you escape and for a little bit just feel different and learn something interesting and just fantasize. Like it can help you increase your imaginative powers. It can also help you to learn. It can give you new ideas. There's so many great things about reading and even things like it increases your patience because maybe hearing an audiobook or watching Netflix is easier than reading, but it doesn't make you a patient person who page by page just gets things done. So you could try a reading challenge like read one page per day, read 10 pages per day, or read for 20 minutes every day, no matter the speed or the amount that you read. Next up is a journaling challenge. So a lot of people try journaling for a certain amount of time and it's for everybody, but it does have benefits. It can help you to understand yourself better because sometimes in conversation with other people, we realize how we feel through the way that we talk. So it is important that we also actively talk to ourselves 
and journaling can help us do that. So maybe you can try it out. Maybe it's for you, maybe it's not. And you can just start by writing one sentence every day or just writing your feeling right now, how you're feeling. You can watch my video about mood tracking. I actually journaled my mood every day for a year and I saw great benefits to that. I'll link that up here and yeah, just try it out. Maybe it's for you, maybe it's not, but it's definitely a great way to save your thoughts on paper for you to read later or for you to just get something off of your heart. Next up is a waste reducing challenge. And unfortunately we live in a moment in time where our planet is not doing so good. There's a lot of waste in our oceans, in our forests. There's a lot of pollution in our air. There are a lot of animals dying. There's fire. There's all these kinds of things happening. And it's very much for one single person to tackle, but every one of us can do a part to make things better. So we can try by reducing our waste. Maybe we can have a reusable cup with us around at all times for our morning cappuccino. Maybe we can try to have a bag for shopping, like a reusable cloth bag. There's all kinds of zero waste swaps that we can try out and we can try to buy things in the store that are not wrapped in plastic. So if you're interested in that, you can just check out something that you could do easily depending on your kind of position, what you're available to do and just try doing that for 30 days and see if you can live with it maybe long term and help our planet. Next up is you can try a elaborate skincare routine challenge. Maybe you can try the infamous Korean skincare routine. Just something that will help your skin feel better for a certain amount of time and cleaner. And the thing is, if you do get a lot of benefits from trying this routine out, then maybe you can long term find out exactly what products brought you the most value and just keep doing that. My next challenge idea kind of has to do with the last challenge idea and it is a water challenge. Water is great for our skin, for our organs, for weight loss, for literally everything. Like we need water to function and it can help to get our appetite under control and it just makes our skin elastic and it's, it's just great for everything. So everybody knows that they should drink more water it has also the opportunity cost that it can make sure that we don't drink a fizzy drink later. So if we drink water, we're not gonna end up drinking that juice or that fizzy drink, which has a whole bunch of calories and sugar and all the things we mentioned before. Next up is a minimalism challenge. And this is something that I kind of, I guess, started minimalism with. Now I am a full on minimalist because I definitely felt that this is a challenge that I liked and it had a lot of benefits for me. So there's a bunch of challenges on Pinterest that you can try that are related to minimalism. For example, you can declutter something every day. It doesn't just have to be an item. It can be something that you don't like doing. It can be some part, any part of your life you can minimize, which is also something that I'm doing. I'm doing it with my goals, with the way I spend my time, with my to-do list, with my clothes, with my items. You can apply minimalism everywhere. Next up is a socialization challenge. So this might be easy for some of you and for some others of you, it could be a little bit harder because a lot of life now is about working and a lot of time we spend our free time on our phone or we don't even know what we're doing or we're Netflixing or we're playing a game. It could be anything that gets between us and actual human communication with our friends. And friends are great because if we have the right friends for us, we can feel supported, motivated, loved. They can teach us new things that we cannot really learn just by ourselves. They can give us new ideas. They can push us forward. They can give us all of these great things. So we need to make sure that we're making proper time for our friends. And my very last challenge is actually an idea and it is a learning challenge. It's not exactly like the one where you go on Udemy or your Skillshare and learn a new skill. It's kind of an idea where you think about what are the most important things about your life that you don't know much about. So don't think about something like your hobbies. Say you're an artist and you wanna learn something about digital art. No, no, no. 
think about the fact that you're a human and you don't know, for example, where the water that you're drinking in your specific neighborhood comes from, or you don't know how your waste is being disposed and how it's being recycled or anything like that in your specific kind of life situation. Do you know enough about nutrition? Do you know about the things you're eating every week? Do you know where your local restaurant sources its food? So things that are really important to you as like a body, like an animal, a mammal, that you don't know. These were all of my challenge ideas and I think these are great. I think you can start a lot of healthy habits from these, you can learn a lot from these and then you can just have have an awesome year ahead of you just trying these out and yeah let me know which ones you're gonna try out let me know if you like the video you can put a thumbs up and i'll see you in my next video which will also be talking about goals and challenges and just being a better you you got this